turning the master switch on my van's electrical system for the first time was the most stressful and also the most rewarding step. Hey, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name's Lucy and I really like to build things. And this week we are going to review the electrical system of my NV2500 van conversion. Watch that fan shadow on the floor there. And there's the moment I know I at least have power. Yippee! I am not an electrician, so anything you choose to do, you do at your own risk. Um, I learned a lot of what I know from Explorist Life, uh, watching Nate's videos, so please check out his channel, as well as his very detailed wiring diagrams. I will put a link to his channel in my description. I will include chapters, so if you just want to skip to what you want to know, that's great, but we're going to cover basic terms and information, tools and techniques, uh, decisions and uh, why I chose some of the components that I did. We'll go through the shore power system as well as the solar power system. So let's cover a few basics first. So AC current or alternating current is like the power from your home. So like the three prong outlets that you're plugging your appliances into into your home. This will include three wires, the positive black, the neutral white, and the ground green. DC or direct current is like battery power. So if you have like USB outlets in your car, that's gonna be DC power. And this has two wires. And in this case, the positive red and the black is negative. Shore power is a marine term, but has certainly been you know, used as an RV term as well. And it just means that anytime you're plugged into an external power source. So if you're plugged in like at a campsite, that's gonna be your shore power. An inverter lets us convert that DC power from our battery bank into AC power. So we're still able to use those 120 volt outlets like home type outlets, even when we're not uh, hooked up to shore power. Fuses protect the wires, not the components of the system. So you wanna have all of your wires fused as early as possible. So you'll notice in my diagram here, there's a fuse immediately off of the batteries. And then the links distributor is filled with fuses where all of the wires are gonna be distributed from there. And then at the DC panel, of course, everything is gonna be fused before it goes to each of like the lights and the DC outlets. In any of the previous electrical work that I'd done, I'd never had the need to work with really large wires. So I always thought that as the gauge number got lower, the wire got bigger. And that is true to a point. So when we're going from like 16 gauge to six gauge, the six gauge is a lot bigger than the 16 gauge. But once we get past zero and we start with the aught wires, then they start going up again. So a two aught wire is smaller than a four aught wire. There are traditionally three ways that people power their van. Uh, number one is shore power, of course, just being, you know, plugged in. Number two is solar power. And number three is alternator charging. And that is when you are using your starter battery to charge your system. So you'll notice that I'm going to use two of three of these and I will discuss this more later. High quality cable cutters are very key because you're gonna be working with some really big wires. So I was using two out wires and these Klein cutters made short work of this. The rounded shape also makes them really nice for stripping some of the large wires. Hydraulic wire crimpers are also really nice to have. You can get the hammer kind, but the hydraulic ones just gave me the confidence that I had a really secure connection. Interestingly enough, I did have to use the size smaller than what was actually uh, stamped on the, the pieces that compress, and that I have found in the Amazon comments. So I was hoping that when I got mine, perhaps that had been corrected, but it had not. So just be aware of that, that you may have to use one size smaller. You're gonna need a heat gun. I went with this Ryobi because I already had all of the batteries. However, anything that uses heat uses up a lot of batteries. So to do it over again, I just would have bought a plug-in kind. Any wire strippers will do, but these self-adjusting ones are awesome and well worth the investment. They save a lot of time and a lot of frustration. During the manufacturing process of any metals, oils can be left behind. So you wanna make sure that you rub everything down with alcohol. Also, lever nuts make connections super easy and very strong and are well worth the investment instead of trying to do wire nuts. Make sure that you label everything on both sides of the connection. Pre-wiring is a really beneficial step. So by you know running all the wires to both sides of the van and to the front and the back, um, it was it worked out really great. But the key was to label again everything. Um, and then when I pre-wired this cabinet, 
which has the distribution panel for the AC and DC side. And that was wonderful because I was able to have it in my air conditioned shop up on a workbench instead of laying, you know, on my van in the heat trying to do this. And then since I used those lever nuts, it worked out great because I just had to connect everything, you know, because everything was labeled when I got it out to the van. Everybody has different needs when you're, you know, considering renovating a van. And so for me, one of the big things is that this is a weekender. I do not plan on living in this van. I also grew up in Minnesota and I now live in Arizona. So that tells you how much I like the cold. I do not have any intentions of camping in sub-zero temperatures. I chose not to include an alternator charging option and I'm happy with this decision. On my first trip, I never once plugged into shore power and I had plenty of energy from solar. Um, the reason why I decided to do this was one cost and two, I figured that worst case, I run out of power somewhere and I have to drive somewhere to plug in. Worst case with the alternator uh, power is or charger is if something were to happen and I mess something up and uh, my alternator goes out and I'm not able to start my van, now I'm stranded. So that just wasn't worth it to me. I am not sponsored by anyone, so every component that I use in this van I have to purchase myself. So of course cost was a big consideration. And I tend to look back at really, you know, popular YouTubers and see what they were using before they were sponsored, you know, when they had to consider actual, you know, value for their dollar. And so that's why I went with a little bit less expensive inverter. And I went with more budget friendly batteries. And again, I'm not gonna be in those sub zero temperatures needed heating ba heated batteries and stuff like that. But then there are areas that I did feel like it was really worth spending the extra money, like the Lynx distributor that you'll see in my diagram is certainly not necessary. You can just do, you know, bus bars and fuses, but for me to be able to make it look neater and cleaner and a little bit less overwhelming was worth it to me. I also figured that I could upgrade the batteries or inverter at any time, but the one thing that I would never be able to upgrade is the wires. So I went with marine grade wires throughout, so they're stranded, um, tinned, and they're going to hold up for the life of the van. I will put affiliate links to everything that I use. So I'm just going to run through the components really quickly. This is the 30 amp RV inlet that I used. This is the 2000 watt Ames inverter. I use two 100 amp hour uh, Amper Time Lithium Batteries, the Victron BMV712 uh, Battery Monitor with Temperature Sensor, the Victron MPPT 100 Volt 30 Amp Solar Charger. The previous two items both talk to the Victron app, and this is pretty cool. I'm able to pull up both of these items, and when I click on either one, I'm able to see what my battery life is at, its temperature, how much it's discharged, how much solar I'm currently taking in, a lot of really cool information. The Victron Lynx distributor, again, this is not necessary. It's kind of a complicated bus bar, holds all of your big fuses, but it really makes for a nice, tidy setup. I really like this distribution box because it makes for a really nice tidy setup. So on the right hand side you have all of the DC uh, fuse blocks and then on the left you have all of the AC circuit breakers. I used three 100 watt Renogy solar panels. The solar entry gland allows for a nice waterproof surface. Then on the solar system you also need both a solar breaker and a box for that breaker. All right, so let's get into the wire diagram. So we're gonna start with the batteries. These are going to be wired in parallel. So positive to positive and negative to negative. It's very important that you mark out your cables so that they are the same length, so that all of the positive cables and all of the negative cables are the same total length. So these three red cables are going to be equal to these two black cables. And it's okay if you just have to have an extra loop in the cable then. This is what it looks like in my final product. So you can see that the three reds I've circled and then the two black wires. So when I got to that black wire, I did have to have a little bit of extra length there and that's okay. So since the fuse protects the wire, there's a fuse immediately after the batteries. And here we can see this in the practical application in my unit. Next, we're gonna move up to the main power switch as well as to the battery sensor. Make sure that you read the installation guide provided by Victron for the battery sensor and make sure that you are attaching the battery to the battery side. The display for the uh, battery sensor comes with a nice long cable so you can display it anywhere so I'm laser engraved this nice little panel for it. 
On the back of the on off switch, it acts like there's an input and an output. Disregard this, there's going to be current going in both directions, so you do not need to worry about this. I chose to make my own copper bar for these two connections, and I'm happy that I did because it made for a nice clean system. To do cables with, you know, lugs on each side, I would have had to space everything out a bit more. So next, let's take a look at this Lynx distributor. This is going to distribute the wires to the distribution panel, the inverter, and the solar charger in my model. Of course, if you were doing alternator charging, there, you would also be running that through the distributor. So on the inside, you can see that I have three mega fuses for those three components I just mentioned. Of course, if you had an alternator, there would be a fourth mega fuse. And I love that all of that mess is hid in this nice, tidy package when you are done. From the Lynx distributor, we are going to run large wires to the Ames inverter. Now, the wires to the inverter are going to be specific to whatever inverter that you are using, as far as well as the ground back from it. So, um, please, you know, visit Explorer's Life if you want to get more specifics about actual wire gauges. Again, I am not an expert, and I do not want to steer you wrong with whatever component you decide to use. So let's take a look at the inverter and the distribution box next. So of course we have the DC power running into the inverter in the back. Now on the front side is where we're going to have our AC power. The AC power entering the van through the 30 amp plug is going to go to the uh, power in part of the inverter and then the power out part is going to go to the distribution panel. If you are using the same inverter, just make sure that you are very conscious of the wire direction. So uh, reading it from left to right, it's going to be green, black, white, and then white, black, green for the other side. So just make sure that you really pay attention to which wires you are putting in which location. I also purchased the Ames remote for the inverter and mounted it here so I can conveniently turn the inverter on and off without needing to get down to the electrical part of the van. The distribution panel uses blade fuses as well as square D circuits, just like circuit breakers, just like you would have in your home. And just to give you an idea of just how nice and tidy this keeps everything, um, this is, you know, my panel open when it has its, its front cover on. So next, let's look at the solar side of things. So the max that I could fit on the roof of my van was three 100 watt Renogy solar panels. These are wired in series and there's a lot of people a lot smarter than me that can explain this better. So, you know, if you want to consider parallel versus series wiring, um, please, you know, look at the number of videos that are already out there on this. The Renogy solar panels come with nice water tight connectors already with them and the wires then are run down through this entry gland and then into the circuit breaker and this breaker acts as the cutoff for the solar power so that's very important to have in your system you do have to buy the breaker and the box separately from the breaker the wires are run to the solar charger so that's an overall look at the electrical system that i used in my camper van again thank you to nate at explorers life for all of the wonderful videos that helped teach me this information um, please you know watch a lot of videos and do a lot of research before you attempt the electrical system of your van it is very rewarding and wonderful if you're enjoying my journey here please like and subscribe and follow along I will do an additional video on where the power goes from here. So, you know, what lights I used, what outlets I used, uh, my air conditioner, fan, all of that kind of stuff. So stay tuned.